Released in 1993, Night Slashers from Data East was the first truly gory beat'em up, in a time where beat'em ups were all the rage, bringing countless kingdoms in peril when girlfriends kidnapped, Night Slashers tried something different, gore and horror. While the game was never that great when compared to some Capcom or Konami games, it was good enough to be very successful at the time and developed with the years a solid fan base. Fast forward 31 years and Night Slasher is back with a remake, developed by the Polish studio Storm Trident and being published by Forever Entertainment, the game is available today for only 10 bucks and we will see if this game was worth all the necromancy to bring it back to life or if it should have stayed on the grave. But before all that, hi, I am Savino and welcome to the Flying Kick channel. The story in Night Slasher is, as it was with all arcade beat'em ups, a bit simple. It tells the tale of fantastical monsters that once appeared in the city terrorizing the townsfolk and creating chaos. Three months later, a group called Night Slashers presented themselves as humanity's last hope and they were ready to face the hordes of impossible creatures. The story will fold out as you play with some very nice cutscenes between each one of the stages. These are just simple panels with some text telling you where you are going next or the bad guys planning your doom, but they are a very nice touch. They were in the original game, but here they earn a nice coat of paint. You might be wondering why I didn't show the intro cutscene telling the story as I always do and, well, it's a bit weird. There's an intro cutscene here, I saw it, but it never appeared again to me. I let the game run on the splash screen and on the main menu to see if I could spot it again and record it, but nope, no luck. In some sense, I think they are hiding it, because it was super disappointing to see that they didn't change a bit here. What do I mean by that? Well, they used the same intro from the original, but a bit worse, since it's now smaller in size, since it appears inside an arcade machine. It was something like this. Yeah, look, I, I love the original pixel art as much as the next person, but for a remake that is changing the whole game, including a new character and tons of new art, this felt a bit cheap. Maybe, I don't know, they want to preserve the original intro, but if so, why not do the same with the other cutscenes? It feels weird, you know, disjointed. But yeah, that's just the story here on the Flying Kick, we don't care too much about that, so let's talk about the most controversial subject on this remake, the graphics. As I said in my video talking about the demo, I don't think the graphics are as bad as people are saying around the web. Yeah, they are not fantastic, but they are not bad or cheap, at least not in my opinion. Yeah, they are a bit way too clean for my taste and for the game's theme, and these dots all over the place are not really the style I dig the most, but overall it looks okay. I mean, the backgrounds are pretty good, with lots of details and thankfully some good parallax scrolling and shadows thanks to the use of a 3D engine, I just think in some places the backgrounds look a little blurry as you can notice by these statues here. Honestly, this is nothing you would really notice when playing, so much so that I only notice when editing this video, but still, it's a bit weird to see this lack of care. It can be linked to the 3D engine and how many resources it uses, but I would not know for sure. There are some cool effects here too, like light shafts and reflections on puddles, and both your characters and enemies can leave footprints after stepping on all the blood splattered around. But while the footprints are something you will see a lot, the same can't be said about the light shafts and reflections. The puddles appear only on the first level and... While this is exactly how it was in the first game, this is something they could have used to make the game appear more detailed. The light shafts will appear on some levels, but while they look cool in the game, they will not interact with your character, not even a bit. It's a bit weird because I remember the developers talking about the game having dynamic lights, but maybe I understood it wrong. It's a missed opportunity, but nothing that really hurts the overall experience. Now, when it comes to the characters, I'm not as quite fond of them as I am of the backgrounds. I mean, they look okay at best, but 
When it comes to the enemies, I don't like them at all. While some of them have a lot of details, like the zombies with their guts out with things swinging when they walk around, which looks pretty cool, but at the same time they look so clean. Some of them will have some drops of blood on their shirts, but the majority of the enemies will look fresh from the shower. Now, the animations are unfortunately on their weaker side. Enemies can have some choppy walk cycles and some, while you're hitting them, will stand in the air in an idle position as if nothing was happening. There are good details in some animations here and there, but overall I don't think they are too good. A uh, thing that I think is missing when it comes to the graphic is an option to switch to the original art style. I know there are a few things here that would make it more difficult and the game's production expensive, but I think it would have been worth it. Now, if there's one thing that I'm really glad to see, or better yet, to listen to, is the soundtrack. In Night Slasher's remake, you will be able to choose between the original soundtrack and the remastered. The remastered version is fantastic, I mean, there's no comparison between the types of sample you can use today and the ones you could use 31 years ago, so of course it would sound better. But not only that, the tunes have new arrangements that are pretty good making what was an already awesome soundtrack way better. I just wish they had used a better version of the original tunes because for some reason it sounds a bit muffled in the game when compared to what you can listen to on the original. The character voices are also way better and easier to comprehend. I mean, trying to listen to what Jake was saying at the arcades wasn't an easy thing to do, and when we were able to hear it at home, it wasn't impressive. In this remake, you will be able to hear your heroes being corny in all its glory. Another thing that you will be able to hear in all its glory is the bodies of your enemies dissolving and dismantling when you hit them. It sounds a little bit cartoony, but it's very satisfying to listen to the flash of your enemies being hit. You can also hear the sounds of your clothing whooshing in the air and the hits on your enemies despite being a little bit muffled thanks to all the other sounds playing at the same time. And there's a plenty of enemies to fight, if there's one thing that Night Slashers never shied away was to put you on a screen with a dozen enemies at once. The game is constantly throwing enemies at you and despite you not having a ton of moves to deal with them, what you have here is pretty effective. You know, Night Slasher is your typical 3 button arcade with a jump, an attack and a desperation move that can clear the screen in exchange for some health. You also can run and attack, grab your enemies and you can charge your attacks by holding the attack button for a while, but don't hold it for too long or you end up dizzy. This is a pretty cool mechanic that can prevent you from overdoing this overpowered attack and it's very powerful and useful, I would say it's even more useful than your desperation move. And all these moves will change depending on the character you are using, here in Night Slasher's remake you have the three original characters, Christopher, Jake and Hong Hwa, plus the newcomer, Liu Fei Lin, who was a character in Data East fighting game Fighters History. Liu Fei Lin is an excellent addition to this game and thanks to her charged attack, she can be a very good option for newcomers. She's a bit slower than Hong Hwa, but as strong as Christopher and she feels like she always belongs to this game. The other three are your typical beaten up stereotypes, you have your grappler, your all-rounder and the fast and weak girl. And you know what, there's nothing wrong with that. Night Slasher Remake didn't change the number of levels, you still have the same levels and two bonus levels, but here they added some secret areas that are not as easy to find as you may imagine. You have to look for them, but strangely they don't offer anything special and in some cases it can even be a problem, like this one on the first level that takes you back to the beginning of the level, making you face the elevator horde all over again. You will score more points for beating the enemies, some of which are new and you can even earn an extra life, but aside from the novelty, I don't think they add anything of value to the game. If the developer chooses to treat them as a new route or with a new boss, even if changing the story a bit, it would have been way better. 
but it's easy to criticize it without knowing how the deal with Data East went. I mean, sometimes these IP holders can be very protective and we will only allow a couple of changes in the source material, so a new boss or changes to the story are more often than not out of the question. Now, one thing that could have been changed was the feel of the combat. Now, one thing that didn't need to change was the feel of the combat. Night Slasher was a very crunchy beaten up when it comes to hitting your enemies. While it was never my favorite, it had some good hit stuns both on your enemies and your characters. It wasn't great, but it was good enough. In Night Slasher's remake, this feeling is gone. Each one of the punches feels soft and weak and you don't have a nice hit stun to improve this feeling. Look, there's no gentle way to put it, but I find hard to believe that Night Slash's remake is a finished product. You guys know I play a bunch of games in many different stages of development and I can say with confidence that this is a beta at best. Aside from the weird choice for the intro, which in all honesty feels like a placeholder, there are other things that led me to this conclusion. First, the inability to change controls. Oh, you can change the controls, or at least the game wants you to think that, but in reality, no matter which configuration you choose, the game will always return to default. Take a look at this clip so you can see it in action. I let my inputs appear on the screen so you can follow me. All right, let's start the game. Take three good. My new main, that's awesome. All right. Oh. I need to change the controllers. Right, F, A, Y. Okay, good, let's go. Oh. I guess I forget to confirm. Okay. Oh, what? F, A, Y. Okay. Maybe, maybe I should press start. But that's the good. Okay. Oh mother I said that in the original the combat was good but not great, but here somehow they made it worse. It feels like your enemies are super light, made out of rubber or something, and you flay you and bounce all over the screen while you beat them and they beat you and you won't notice a thing because the hit stun animations are not good at all. The game, as you may have noticed already, it's plagued with bugs. Enemies sometimes can stand over your hurt box like you were a barrel, stay dead in the air, move around while dead, glitching walls and bodies, and bodies that can't decide if they will stay on screen or blink out of existence. I didn't find any game-breaking bugs, but I can't imagine how this would pass QA unless it was rushed out of the door while still in beta, because these are the types of small bugs that you will find in a beta or a late alpha, but not in a final product. These are not random bugs that I found after countless hours of play, these are all from my first playthrough when I had less than 20 minutes of play. Your enemies' AIs are also not fully developed, it seems. Enemies will wander away from you in multiple instances, even when there's only one enemy on the screen, they are also no good in surrounding you or taking advantage of your mistakes. They will simply attack you when you're in range and ignore you when you're not. Sure, they will come to your direction eventually, but it's faster if you go after them. Also, bosses randomly interrupt what they are doing just to stand in place idling for a brief moment like a champ. After the demo three months ago, I had hopes that they would improve the game in a lot of aspects, but it seems that they took this time to finish whatever needed finishing and released it after little to no testing. I refuse to believe this is a finished product that was tested and approved by the developers and they are proud of. 
Nothing can change my mind that this was probably some demand from the IP holder or the publisher and they had to release the beta fearing some contractual consequence. I can't recommend this game yet. If it was listed as early access, it would have been another story, but as a finished product, nope. I don't think so. Even costing only 10 bucks and coming with some cool modifiers that can change your game experience, I can't in good conscience tell you to grab this one. Maybe in the future if they patch this game and really finish it, I can come back to it and recommend it to you, but right now, it's better if you keep the money for yourself or even burn it. It will probably be more fun and there will be no bugs to deal with. As my good friend O Illusionist always says, there are better open board games around and in this case you can find exactly the same game but with better gameplay, better combat and more characters to pick. I mean, I'm really struggling to see any advantages in this remake. But before you think I am dismissing this game altogether, no, I I'm not. I know these developers and they had the same problem with their last game, Skinny and Franco. The game was released in a similar state as this one and it was fixed and improved after a couple of patches. I believe the developers will do the same with this game, so yeah, right now it's not a good game. But don't take it out of your wish list just yet, wait a couple of months, I will return to this game once it's finished with a final review. Night Slash's remake is available right now on Steam and GOG for PC and also for Xbox, PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. You can play with another 3 friends in local co-op only and it will cost you 10 bucks with 10% off as a launch sale. And that's it for the video guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. We got a lot of games this month but unfortunately we got a lot of mediocre games at best. But the year is not over and we still have a few to come. Don't forget to tell me in the comments if you're willing to grab this one and in the meantime, I hope you all have an awesome day and remember, keep it up.